What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down C.D. Lamb and some of his best routes, releases, and overall plays from the 2019 season so far. I think he's arguably the best receiver in college football, and today we're going to break down what makes him so special. Let's get started. So off the line of scrimmage right here, this is a run play. Hertz is taking this thing up the middle. We talk about how everything is a setup, okay? So he's going to be working this release as if he was running just a slant right now or some in-breaking route to get in this DB's head. That is the entire goal of this. It is all a mind game when you're manned up like this. They've probably been playing the whole game. What is it, fourth quarter? It's it's a close game we want to get in his head. So what's he going to be doing here? Off the line of scrimmage, he's going to be working this hesitation release, right? Hesitation, slide him, slide him, slide him, stick in the ground, and gets his DB to jump outside. He avoids the contact. He has no hands on him, and C.D. Lamb isn't even getting the ball. Accomplishes the same thing as a block, right? And he knows Hurts is going up the middle, so he really doesn't play that much of a factor. He's just got to keep his guy out of the play. But this is all a setup, guys. Fast hands, fast feet, get this DB thinking. Now, what this opens up is now, let's say, from a receiver's standpoint, you want to work this hesitation, this slide release, and you want to run a vertical, right? Now, you're in this DB's head. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to get beat outside again, so he starts cheating inside. He starts playing this thing inside, then we just take off outside. It's all a mind game, guys, and it would be the same thing if you wanted to slide him to the inside. Slide him inside, then take him back out. Now, he's thinking outside. He's cheating outside, and then you run a slant on him. It's all a mind game, guys. We've got to make the DB believe he, we're going one way and then just go the other. It's really as simple as that, but everything is a mind game. Everything we do matters, even when we're out of the play, even when we're out of the play completely. We don't take a playoff because these set up the big gains. Everybody loves to talk about the big routes, the big plays. These kind of plays right here set up the broken ankles off the line of scrimmage. They set up the separation. So let's watch this thing full speed and then we'll get on to the next route. So slide him, slide him, stick. Gets him hopping, gets him outside, gets him outside of him. That's a great job by using a mind game to set up things later in the game, or even just when another when another DB watches that on film, they see that release. It's all a setup, guys. Especially when you're at that level, you got to play. You, it's a lot. Everybody's physically talented, but the mental part of the game is what separates a lot of guys. So let's watch this play full speed. This is a great play he made running after the catch. A big part about playing receiver is being able to make people miss after the catch. So let's watch what he does here. So he gets upfield, sinks those hips, stick, and then he miss, breaks a tackle, and then he gets upfield, and he ultimately scores off of this. This is a big time play that he made this year and so we're going to talk about how he's able to change direction so fast so he gets this ball and immediately he's just gone catches it let's get upfield let's just go right now now when he makes this cut right here he's dropping his hips like he would on a route that's how we get faster at changing direction i get a lot of people ask me how can i change direction faster how can i make plays off the ball fat or how can i make plays in the field faster this is how you got to have violent hips see how he's out of there two steps and he's getting up into his route explosive hips and let's make this move stick right here just like if he were running a post. It's the same exact thing, guys. Receivers should be great after the catch because it's all the same thing as route running, changing direction. You gotta have explosive hips. You gotta have sudden and violent feet to explode and to get you upfield, and that's exactly what he has, and that's why he's so dangerous after the catch. Same thing with Jerry Judy, a guy that they like to compare him to a lot, see who's the best in college football. Explosive after the catch, right? And it's all because they're such great route runners. And he comes off stick here, avoids is in a great pad level position to avoid this tackle and he's getting upfield. He makes a couple moves and then he's always focused on getting upfield. What a lot of guys do and why they get in trouble is they make too many moves back and forth. They're not gaining any ground. C.D. Lamb is always gaining ground. This is a great job. Let's watch this thing full speed again one more time. So he catches this ball over the top. Then immediately, let's get upfield. Let's go right now. Violent hips, stick, and then get upfield, break that tackle, then let's go score. That's a great job by C.D. Lamb working after the catch. Okay, so now he's going to be here. He's the number three receiver. Now, he's going to be running a dig. Now, this is clearly zone coverage. You can see zone coverage. Everything about this says zone. All right? So now the main thing I want you to see, how he doesn't waste any time in his route. He's running a dig, and he just goes. Because it's zone coverage, and if he wastes time, he's gonna, the, the DB is going to be able to make a play on the ball. We talk about it all the time. It's a race to the ball. So let's watch this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So kind of slow off the line, kicks up into second gear, and he rounds this thing, and he just goes right now. Now, the reason why he didn't make a break, and see, ultimately, he's able to break a tackle and get upfield in the score. Now, the reason why he didn't just break down on this thing is I'll explain it to you. So he's coming off here. He kind of gives this little bit of a walk-off release for the timing, right? Timing with the quarterback. Gives a little bit of this walk release. So he comes off walk, 
kicks up into second gear, okay? Kind of lulls this linebacker to sleep, doesn't allow him to get hands on him right away and reroute him. Now, when he's in this position, CeeDee Lamb, what he could very easily do, and this is what a lot of young receivers, they make this mistake, is they'll be right here and they'll break down. They'll go fast hands and they'll fast feet and they'll sink their hips and, you know, they make this break that they work all these drills for, right? Now, what does that do for this guy? It's a race to the spot right here. Hertz is putting this ball right here. Who's going to get there first, right? Now, if the DB sees you break down like that, what's he going to do? He's going to come up and he's going to break on the ball. Now, let's say if you were running like a stutter go, that would be a different story, right? But in this situation, he doesn't want to waste any time. He just want to get he just wants to get up into the route. So that's why he's able to wind, round this thing and change direction fast. Now, how he's able to do that is with this pad level. He doesn't pick his chest up. He's in an explosive pad level throughout. It's just like he's running around, you know, those like circles. You see a lot of linemen run around it at practice. It's just like that. He's running around that. He's running around that circle on this field, working this dig because at this point right here, who's going to get to the ball first? Is it going to be C.D. Lamb or is it going to be this DB? It's going to be C.D. Lamb because he didn't waste any time. It's all a race to the ball. Who will get there faster? And C.D. Lamb is ultimately able to make this catch, catches this thing on his body. Great job in catching traffic. And then he breaks this tackle. Good job having a strong base, strong legs, and then he gets upfield for a Big, big play right here. That's a great job by C.D. Lamb. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. Just kind of walk, slow play, doesn't let him get hands, and just rounds this thing off right now. Full speed, kicks up into second gear, catches this ball, breaks this tackle, and now let's get upfield. Let's go score. That's a great job by C.D. Lamb just getting into this route, not wasting any time here. Okay, so he's going to be running a dig again right here, but I want you to look at his stem, and we're going to talk about the coverage. So, it's going to be cover two. Now, how you can tell it's cover two is by pre-snap what happens. Cover two is when this corner's playing the flat and the safety takes away this sideline. But actually, it's Tampa two because this linebacker right here drops to the middle of the field. Okay, so it's Tampa two. So we're going to watch this thing full speed, and then we're going to break it down. So again, he's going to be running a dig. But I want you to see his stem here. C.D. Lamb is very smart and recognizes that it's cover two. Probably from film study all week. This way, when we got this play, this is what you have to do. This is how you have to work with your stem. He just has to go out there and execute. Offensive coordinator did a great job. Now, he's already going to be cheating outside. So C.D. Lamb wants him to think like he's just maybe running like a wheel or he's running a vertical right here. This guy's running a hitch, like maybe a smash concept, like a sma like some kind of smash concept, right? So he takes his stem, he angles his stem. Now, what does he do? Gets this, this safety to fly out, right? Creating this entire gap right here. All this quarterback has to do is hit it right in this window. So he angles his stem out this way, gets this DB sliding with him because it's covered to, or Tampa two, I should say, over the middle, getting that deep sideline, corner staying in the flat, hook to curl right here from the backers, cover two situation. So again, he doesn't break down. He gets to this position, he doesn't come right here and beat the drum like all these people love to say fast hands fast feet here and then is real slow out of the break he just rounds this thing off and is hitting this thing full speed flattens it out and hurts is able to hit him right in that window that space that he created was created because of the stem gets him to widen out see off the line of scrimmage if let's say he's here and let's say he just goes right now on this dig this is a very tight window because that backer's playing hook to curl. He's over the middle of the field, and that safety's going to be able to come down. So it's a very tight window for Hertz to make that throw, and he probably won't throw it because it's into almost triple coverage. So by angling his stem outside, that gives him this space. That creates the space for the quarterback. we got to be a second quarterback on the field. That's why him and Hertz have such good chemistry, and they're putting up big numbers this year because um, C.D. Lamb understands the concepts that Hertz is looking for. And then he's able to just round this thing off. He sits in that hole and then makes a great catch. Now, after the catch, we're going to talk about it. After the catch, he catches it. Now, what does he do? He just gets upfield right now. Catches it. Let's get upfield right now. Makes this guy miss. He overcommits. Safety overcommits. Let's just go. Let's get upfield. Let's get what we can. And then ultimately, he makes three guys miss in that situation. Then he's able to get upfield and go score, make a big play, something out of nothing. When it should have just been about a 15, 20-yard gain, he turns this thing into a touchdown. That's a great job by C.D. Lamb. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So coming off, widens him, breaks this thing off over the middle, catch this ball, let's get a field right now. He doesn't waste any time making all these pointless moves. He catches the ball, then he gets up field. That's what all great receivers need to do to be explosive after the catch. So now he's going to be running a goal line fade. Now, we're going to talk about scheme here for a second. This is why Lincoln Riley, I think, is one of the best offensive minds in college football. So they're on the right hash, right? So he's not going to be all the way out here at the numbers and run this fade, right? This is a little bit of scheme. So he cuts his split down, right? That's pretty basic stuff. Cuts the split down. Now, he's got about 
what I would say maybe 25, 20 yards to work with before the before the sideline. So what are we thinking here, receivers? If we're going to be running a fade back shoulder okay you can't defend it if you get this guy in a back pedal and then you break up to this fade and you got this much room to work over here back shoulder is going to beat him every single time if the quarterback puts a good ball so let's watch this thing full speed then we'll break it down so he's coming off jab to the inside look at all that space he's got easy money when you take care of what you need to take care of as a quarterback and see what he's doing here is he's attack he's attacking this db's leverage right he's off he's off the ball you want to close the gap with him to get him backpedaling as much as possible okay that's what we got to accomplish as a receiver in this situation and then all he does is makes that stick in the ground bam let's look back for this ball look DB's running here, head's not even looking at the ball, which it should it shouldn't really be. He should be playing CD's hands, but all Hertz has to do, he's got all of this room to work with. So receivers, if we cut our split down, which your offensive coordinator should have you do in that kind of situation where you got a goal line fade, you're one on one, you're on the right hash, expect the back shoulder. Guys, quarterback could throw it to the back pylon, you never know. But tell him, hey, listen, we got all this space to work. Let's try to go back shoulder, let's try to make this play happen. And then he does a great job of reacting to it, getting out of this break, catching this ball. DB's got no chance. And again, here, he doesn't show his hands and go up for this ball right away. He's got late hands, okay? Because like I said, he's playing the hands, right? Late hands. See, he can't react until the ball's already there because he showed late hands. That's how we catch the ball in a goal line situation. Late hands. Anytime we're going over the shoulder, any kind of fade, late hands is how we make sure that we catch this ball. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Please leave in the comments any questions you might have or who you would like to see me break down next. I really appreciate that, and I'll see you guys next time.